Mike Berlack here to entertain you with the help of Tim Truman. Meryl Flesh themes music. <coughs> Anywho. Uh, uh, Tim Truman uh, wrote the Meryl's uh, Place uh, theme music. But there is a soundtrack. Unfortunately, uh, the theme music is missing from the soundtrack. So, <laughs> so I'm going to talk about... Uh, I finished... Uh, the end of season three, so I'm going to talk about my reflections of there. But before I do that, uh, there are dues to be paid, so I need to tell you all, I have a sponsor. This video is brought to you by a little place called Bidets and You. <laughs> Bidets and You, because sometimes you just got to get clean in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> Bidets and you for that extremely anal person on your Christmas list. Okay, now that I took care of the business end of this. <laughs> Marrow's Play, Season 3. Um, I know I, what I said before about uh, I, I wasn't going to go on, but I didn't know. I, I thought we'd at least get to see the explosion. <laughs> they gypped you. At the end of season three, the explosion it doesn't happen until the very beginning of season four. So, <laughs> but I have to say, the Kimberly character, man, that character was broken in almost every way a human person can be broken, and it's I think it's to the actress uh, Marissa uh, Cross, is her her credit, and also Thomas uh, Calibro, the guy who played uh, Doctor Michael Mancini. <laughs> You know, he, that character, he did things in that series so far, season one through three. He did a lot of things that made me want to pat him on the back and shake his hand. And he did a lot of things that made me want to punch him in the face. He probably did more things that made me want to punch him in the face. But, uh, but uh, where he, uh, especially, you know, the, where he, he basically uh, connivedly destroys the Kimberly character emotionally for his own selfish want. I gotta say, I started getting personal flashbacks of some of the belittling things my own male feminist father <laughs> said to me as a child. <laughs> and at that point, you want to see <laughs> the Marissa Cross character take total revenge on the Thomas uh, Calibro character. I mean... <clears throat> It's like, uh, uh, you know, especially on the Michael character. Maybe not take a wrench on everybody like she does, but at least on the Michael Mancini character. I mean, having the hardcore nature I do, I, I was picturing uh, 
uh, uh, Kimberly doing things to Michael that most human minds couldn't even fathom. <laughs> I gotta say, the this, this scenes where Kimberly tries to commit suicide, I found gross. Also, that's why I don't like the Allison character, because he's a drunk. I, I find that gross. Human weakness is not attractive, <laughs> whether it's male or female. Human weakness just isn't attractive. But I gotta say, the, the boot camp sequence in the story was a surprise for me. I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> but the thing about this show is it's full of surprises around every plot corner. <laughs> But the, the sweaters the girls were wearing in this boot camp thing said, no more victims. Yeah, cute sweater, but I found it cr contradictory to what uh, modern feminism <laughs> has become in 2021. <laughs> modern uh, uh, feminism uh, in 2021 thrives on victimhood mentality. <laughs> All right, I'll try to keep that to a minimum for the rest of this video. But, but the fact that the Kimberly... Uh, Villainous alter ego is a nasty haggard dude. <laughs> the mere reflection when she goes cuckoo. <laughs> it reminded me of that goofy comedy of Dr. Jekyll and Ms. Hyde. I vaguely remember it. I, I think I have a VHS copy of it somewhere. <laughs> but uh, I only saw it once or twice in my life. Uh, it's not exactly award-winning stuff. Uh, I remember, what I remember, the effects were cheesy. <laughs> but, uh, entertaining. Good enough to watch once a decade, I think. <laughs> the guy uh, started it from that show Wings, which is a show I discovered in syndication. It was set in an airport up north somewhere. Uh, it's one of those shows I would watch from time to time. It had some goofy air uh, plane mechanic. Uh, again, I I know him when I see him, but I don't know his name. <laughs> Crystal Bernard was in it, who was also who also had a somewhat of a music career. Even a, did a duet with Peter Satir, frontman for Chicago, the Chicago band in the seventies and early eighties. Um, anyways, uh, want to take forever for tonight? I think was the name of the song. Anyways, uh, but that's that's what the, Hillary's alter ego being a nasty haggard dude <laughs> reminded me of Dr. Jekyll and Ms. Hyde. <laughs> but, uh, uh, <laughs> as much as you hated the Michael Mancini character, though, I gotta say, you know, he had some of the funniest lines. <laughs> he has some of the funniest lines in the Merrill Flake show. <laughs> When Kimberly's all panicking as she got the uh, notice, notification of divorce, and she's like, Michael, what is this? And he looks at her, he's like, Oh, uh, I'm ending our marriage. <laughs> he goes up callously like that. And then when she realized he's been thinking, How long have you been planning this? Since you came back into my life like a refugee from Night of the Living Dead. <laughs> Again, funny line, but. I, I wasn't laughing the first time I watched it because I was more involved with uh, uh, Kimberly Shaw character's point of view. So, But when I watched it the second time around, that sequence the second time around, I saw, then I was laughing my ass off. <laughs> Especially when he points out the fact that she's barren. I, I, that wasn't funny at all. That was just cruel. <laughs> I mean, even as being as self-centered as he had been, he had to have some idea how important motherhood was to her. I mean, for crying out loud, she stole Joe's baby. <laughs> Another line that cracked me up is, is this actually was directed at the Sydney character from the Michael character. Sydney, you're like a bad penny. You keep popping up and I can't get rid of you. <laughs> <laughs> None of the characters of this show <laughs> without flaws, and even the ones who might have started out innocent at the beginning of the series <laughs> didn't stay that way through the trials and tribulations <laughs> of life. <laughs> but uh, I think any human being, man or woman, can only endure a certain number of complex, you know, mental complexes before they start. Blowing up apartment complexes. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so.
some of the other characters, like the Billy character. No, I don't think he should be... I think I do think he's rushing into this relationship with this Brooke, Daddy's Little Rich Girl. But that, I don't necessarily mean... I don't necessarily want to see his character end up with back with Allison. I know her character has been through hell with the... stuff with the, dad, the father back <laughs> when they heard her sister were little... But I know what it's like to attract, and he he points this out too in the series. And I know I personally know what it's like to try to appease someone who cannot ever be at one with their self. My father, growing up when we were kids, just, it, it came all our whole existence became about just making sure Dad is not in the mood where he's going to punch and kick us. And such people, you can only ever be a scape scapegoat to. So, actually, if I had my way, if I were master of the, the little universe known as Marrow's Place, I would have had the chef to Alice's ex-best friend. I wanted to see that relationship flourish between her and Billy. <laughs> but I guess the writers of the show decided that um, that relationship ran its course, and it just wasn't spicy enough anymore for the plot line. <laughs> And the uh, homosexual character, Matt. What's a gay man framed for murdering his gay lover's wife supposed to do? What's a gay man framed for his murder for, for murdering his gay lover's wife supposed to go? <laughs> you know, you could say that his incarceration was his saving grace <laughs> at, the time, you know, at the time when, uh, courtesy of one Dr. Kimberly Shaw, the apartment complex was about to go kaboom! <laughs> uh, all right, just a few more notes of reflection. You know, the Merrill's Place relationship BS is fun to watch. But in real life, most people have families to provide for. They don't have time for such BS. <laughs> I do re I do recall years ago uh, when the show, at the peak of the show's popularity, Meryl Space, they did a parody of it on Saturday Night Live, and Adam Sandler played Billy, and he played the character Smitten and Whipped by Allison. <laughs> <laughs> Where is Allison? I must go to Allison. <laughs> Something like that. Maybe a little bit like in the middle of season two, but I don't think the the guy was whipped. I think, you know, whenever uh, um, <laughs> there wasn't, he wasn't messing around with Allison. He was pursuing other relationships. So. But anyways, that was, I guess, uh, the, the, uh, the point of view of most people for comedy purposes back when SNL did that skit, I guess. Where is Allison? I must go to Allison. <laughs> All right, I'll do it for this one. Mike Perlack, thank you for your time.